with Mike Krzyzewski's experience, is that an advantage over Gary Williams? I don't really know whether it is or not, Tim. Mike Krzyzewski, of course, has four ACC tournament titles to his credit. This is the first time Gary Williams has had one of his teams in the ACC championship game. It's a good thing for each of them, I think, that they're not playing one another. The key is the players they have out on the court, and I think one of the things that both of these guys bring to the table today is outstanding teams with outstanding players. You send the guys out on the court, and they've got to execute it, and Mike Krzyzewski, we said those four ACC tournament titles, he didn't score any points in any of those games. I can tell you this, though. They are both very intense coaches. This will be an intense game, but it will also be fun. The 47th annual Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament set down for Charlotte Coliseum, Charlotte, North Carolina. We're all set to go. Duke comes in with a record of 26 and 4, Maryland 24 and 8. Now let's meet the players. We take you to the public address announcer now in his 25th year as the PA announcer for the ACC tournament, Larry Dunlap. Larry? Devils of Duke. Now the starting lineups. For Maryland, at forward, a 6'9 junior from Frederick, Maryland, number 44, Terrence Morris. At forward, a 6'8 sophomore from Mount Holly, New Jersey, number 15, Danny Miller. The Terps center, a 6'8 sophomore from Silver Spring, Maryland, number 35, Lonnie Baxter. Guard, a 6'3 freshman from Miami, Florida, number 25, Stephen Blake. At guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, number 3, Juan Dixon. Gary Williams is in his 11th year as head coach of the Maryland Terps. Now the starters for the Blue Devils. A 6'6 senior from St. Louis, Missouri, number 23, Chris Carowell. At forward, a 6'8 junior from Birmingham, Michigan, number 31, Shane Battier. Duke Center, a 6'9 freshman from Juneau, Alaska, number 4, Carlos Boozer. Guard, a 6'6 junior from Washington, D.C., number 14, Nate James. And at guard, a 6'2 freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey, number 22, Jason Williams. Mike Krzyzewski is in his 20th year as head coach of the Blue Devils. And those are your Amico starting lineups for this championship game. Number one seed, number two seed. Right now, we take you to Gil McGregor. Jim, thanks a lot. You know, Maryland started the season with a preseason pick for best player in the conference, and that's Terrence Mars. Today, he's going to be messing with St. Betty, one of the better defenders in the conference. But why Duke's been successful? Three's been the charm. Three freshmen, three upperclassmen, and 33s in the first two games of the ACC tournament. And those 33s by the Duke Blue Devils in the first two games, they only need 11 more to set the all-time record in the ACC tournament. But a fact not to be lost as you see them reigning those threes is the fact that the Maryland Terrapins rank number one in the Atlantic Coast Conference in field goal percentage defense. Take a look at this. In the first game, you notice that Maryland only shot 34% from the field. They got 85 shots in the game, but they only shot 34%. And so Duke took the win at Maryland. In the second game, Juan Dixon was just absolutely outstanding for Maryland. And in that game, the Terps did a better job taking advantage of extra possessions that they gained as a result of offensive rebounds and of turnovers than they did in the first game. A lot of talk about Juan Dixon, Chris Carrowell, and about how they could explode today. Juan Dixon scored 21 points against State yesterday despite foul trouble. Carrowell has struggled the first two games, 3 of 13 yesterday, 11 points against Clemson Thursday night. Is he ready to explode? We'll find out. 
He's a guy who may not have scored much offensively, but Gary Williams certainly knows that Chris Carowell's value to the Duke Blue Devils goes much deeper than just his ability to put points on the board. Mike Krzyzewski would obviously like to see Carowell have a big game. The officials today for the championship game, Larry Rose, Mike Wood, Carl Hess, were all set to go at the Charlotte Coliseum. 23,895 have come into the Coliseum this afternoon for this championship game, and we're underway. Battier knocks it out of bounds. Maryland will have it first. Well, they call a jump ball, so there's the first break of the game. No question Battier hit it, but we'll just restart. <laughs> oh, so you're going to announce a referee all at the same time. <laughs> said Maryland has it first. So we're underway. Duke out of the tough man-to-man -to -man defense and Baxter on the inside and there's Shane Battier. We talked about his defensive skills coming over to help out against Lonnie Baxter. Baxter pretty quick in there but not quick enough that time. Yo, yo. All the way back out to Blake. Duke in the man-to-man. -man. Dixon matchup is going to be a great one to watch. The two freshman point guards going at one another. Three. And that may be the X Factor matchup right there. Danny Miller and Nate James. Which one of those guys will get a big advantage? First turnover for the Blue Devils. Maryland gets it back. That ball had some smoke behind it. He really <laughs> threw that one very hard. Boozer was open in there, but you got to catch him first. You know, and Blake jumped in between, too, so I think the Boozer's vision was blocked just for a second, and as you said, it was so hard. And here, Nate James is going to get called for a foul. Duke is going to come out and try to get after Maryland to really pressure the basketball. And it'll be interesting to see if Maryland can get the ball and take it to that defense, get some penetration off the dribble. Duke starts with great intensity defensively. Here's Terrence Morris, his first look. He draws iron. Juan Dixon gets it back. Maryland's on the board. Nice shot by Juan Dixon, but I think Maryland's got to be careful. They don't want to rely completely on the outside shot. The first three opportunities they take are all perimeter jumpers. Battier. Maryland's also going to play in man-to-man -man defense. Inside to go to Boozer. And we're tied at two. And that we talked about that matchup match before the game. Baxter needs to do a better job defensively than that. Morris has a look. This is for two. He's been short on both of his shots. Lonnie Baxter picks up the foul right there. Again, you got to get Baxter involved in the game. And here you got to get Boozer involved in the game. Baxter just doesn't do a very good job getting position. Boozer establishes himself in the post. Baxter looked like he was a little afraid of picking up an early foul, so he picks one up on the offensive end. Third straight ACC tournament title game for Duke. First one ever for Gary Williams as a player or coach. Ball's on the ground. Dixon comes up with it. And this is where Maryland is so effective. Baxter wanted the ball, but they doubled down on him quickly. And the ball just slipped out of Dixon's hands. Now, on that particular trip down the court, Nate James was not guarding Miller at all. Nate James and Boozer were double-teaming Baxter down on the inside. Miller has to recognize that, as do the other Terrapins, and get himself in a position where he can hurt that Duke strategy. Just underway. 18 minutes to play in the first half. We're tied at two. Duke and Maryland. Here's Boozer again. He's got all of Duke's points. Boozer has to be a little bit careful with that one early foul. Terrapins lose the ball again. You know, Boozer scored eight points yesterday. Wasn't a scoring factor. Comes in here and he's got the first four. They're really trying hard to establish him down inside, and that's a good way to put some pressure on Baxter. Boozer again. He has this one blocked. But Terrence Morris loses it out of bounds. Baxter is the leading shot blocker for the Maryland Terrapins. And Baxter, you get the ball down inside, Baxter's going to go after it. He's not going to concede the basket. He's already got that one foul. That's a good play by Boozer to take it at him, see if he can get another early. Battier 
His shot won't go down. Morris pulls it. Here they go. Inside they go to Baxter, and he loses it. Boy, Baxter has had a very frustrating opening three minutes of this game. Three turnovers now for the Maryland Terrapins. Look at this. And that's not a good sign for Maryland. Battier beyond the arc. Loser with a rebound. Here's Williams. Baxter swats it away. <laughs> you better be prepared when you go inside against Maryland. Carrowell. Oh, Maryland's fortunate to get that rebound. Miller just didn't block it out. Baxter out in front. He'll fire from there. Here's Miller. Start of the game limited to outside shots one for six. Duke trying to extend its two point lead. Well, Duke looking to go into Boozer every time down the floor. And Duke doing an outstanding job on the offensive boards. In the first game up in College Park, Maryland had 25 offensive rebounds. Duke already has four offensive rebounds in this ball game. This is James. He hit all those threes yesterday. Everybody cold. Well, there's an awful lot at stake in this game. The automatic bid to the NCAA tournament really is an issue. Each of these teams is going to go. Miller again draws iron. And again, another perimeter jump shot. Maryland that has really made its mark this season by taking the ball inside and scoring has not been able to do that here in the first few minutes of this game. This first time out is needed by both clubs. Battier gets it back up top. I'll tell you what, if you get in an outside shooting contest with Duke, I don't like your odds. I'm with you there, 100%. There's Carrowell. And it's 6-2, Duke. And it's just, you really put yourself in deep trouble if you have scoring droughts against the Blue Devils. You've got to continually put points on the board. Well, one of Maryland's concerns, one of their talked about subjects, was withstanding the early Duke run. Miller's got a good look and rolls it in. And that's what they need to do more of against the Duke defense. Don't try to just take it, shoot that shot from the outside. Put it on the deck, beat the defender, and get one of those what we called yesterday slash points by getting to the basket, slash in there, and create some opportunity either for a shot or a pass to a teammate. So the Terrapins cut the lead to two. Maryland's still in the man-to-man. -man. That's good hands by Miller and Dixon. Maryland wants to run. This is Blake. The numbers aren't there. Out to Dixon. Running one-hander is good. We're Boy, tied at is, six. That is really a good decision by Juan Dixon to fake the shot. Again, one dribble to the basket, and Juan Dixon has a nice in-between game. He's very effective in between the layup and the three-point shot. That mid-range game has really come on for Dixon. Here's Boozer out front. James follows. This is for two. Ball still alive. Oh, what a play by Williams to step in front of that pass by Blake. And then Blake, Blake gets it back. the favor. And the foul on Williams. Ha! We said they were evenly matched. Wow. Well matched. 13.51 to play in the first half. Dixon has tied us at six. The game that we felt like would be pretty evenly matched were tied at six. The Maryland Terrapins and the Duke Blue Devils. It's been an interesting matchup inside. Carlos Boozer taking it right at Lonnie Baxter. Baxter appears a little bit tentative early in the game. Baxter stays in. Boozer takes a seat on the bench. One of the things we want to track today is something we'll call extra possessions. That is a possession that you gain by a turnover or an offensive rebound. Each of these teams so effective offensively, what are they going to do with the extra possessions? Duke, with a slew of offensive rebounds, has eight extra possessions in this game, but they haven't scored as a result. Maryland, with five extra possessions, they turned that into four points. And there, Baxter, with his first shot, trying to draw the foul, then get the whistle. So here comes Duke. Going straight at Baxter is a pretty good ploy. Here's Battier. That's for two. Because Maryland has had problems with foul problems, foul trouble. Here's Blake. This is for three. 
That's a nice job by Blake. If they're gonna drop off of him, he has to make them pay for that. Nice play in transition. Terps lead by one. And Mike Krzyzewski with a timeout. 13-10 to play in the first half. So far, it's a good one. Maryland up by one as a result of a Steve Blake jumper. Now, how did he get that wide open? Look right here. There is Jason Williams. Look at the other Duke players and the pointing. They're trying to match up in transition. And watch what happens to Jason Williams. There's going to be three guys, Battier, Dunleavy, Christensen, and there's a fourth guy, Taj Holden, as well. They all sort of meet. As a result, Williams can't get through, and Steve Blake is wide open for the three-point shot. you got to find your guys in transition, and with Blake, you better find him early. Coach is starting to make changes now. Taj Holden comes in for Terrence Morris. Dunleavy and Christensen come in for Duke. James and Boozer get their first rest for the Blue Devils. Here's Dunleavy, and he has had one whale of a tournament so far. I would say so. Seven out of seven for the three-point range is pretty good. Out to Dunleavy. Up, oh, that's his first three-point miss of the tournament. Williams left alone at the top. This is for three. His first basket. And that's one of those extra possessions we're talking about. Duke now with five offensive rebounds early in this game. And this is going to be called on Christensen over the back of Baxter. That'll be his first personal. Tim, it's not just a matter of taking what the defense gives you sometime. The Maryland Terrapins, even if they have open three-point shots, open perimeter shots, they don't want to limit their offense to that particular part of the game. Morris back in. Maryland trying to get some plays inside. And an easy basket for Dunleavy at the other end. That just went, that pass, that inbounds pass just went right through the hands of Danny Miller. And Miller hurt himself. He was hustling, trying to get back in the play. He says he's all right. But I think Drew Nicholas is going to come in the game. Miller thinking about what he was going to do after he caught the ball. And lots of times you don't catch the ball in that situation. And then he's trying to run down Dunleavy. He just started too far behind. And then slips and falls. Fortunately for him, he didn't hurt himself. Here's Taj Holden. Back to Dixon. They jump him in a hurry and double him in the corner. That's a good play by Dixon. Lots of times you see a guy in that situation call a timeout. Right. Dixon makes the better decision, I think, to bounce the ball off the opposition, save that timeout. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Maryland down by four. Dixon will bring it in for the Terps. He looks for Terrence Morris, who just checked back into the ball game for Baxter. That's a tough matchup for Christians. Morris feels Christian has got a hand on him. Nice job. Nice job to move his feet and stay in position. Terrapin stay in the man to man. Williams with the pass to Dunleavy. They get a break and hit the backboard. Here comes Battier to Carrawell, and he's fouled. Duke really got a break there. Dunleavy, I don't know why he let the pass go because the pass was to him, but Dunleavy lets it go. It hits off the board, Duke recovers, and there's Battier with the penetration, getting it off to Carrawell. And that's where penetration killed you. Foul was on Holden. Carrawell, a 77% free throw shooter. Rattles that one in. He really struggled his first two games in this tournament. Three of 13 yesterday, 11 points against Clemson Thursday night. Maryland still doesn't have any inside baskets. Baxter coming back in the game, but that, that part of the Terrapin offense has been cut off. I thought it was interesting talking about this game, how Carrawell kept saying Dixon torched him in that last meeting at Cameron, and he did, 31 points, and that's been his motivation. Carrawell stand right with Dixon, but there's Blake on the transition, and Morris with a great catch on the inside. you got to beat your guy out on the perimeter, and when you do, that opens up all types of opportunities. Quick hands. Cuts the lead to three. 14 to 11. Each team is trying to pressure the basketball, and that's a hard thing to do if your opponent is quick. It's hard to exert pressure and at the same time prevent yourself from getting beaten on the dribble. Carrawell goes right around Nicholas and banks it in. And there's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Pressure on the ball, but with the quickness of Carrawell, he goes right around and is able to get all the way to the basket. Christensen knocks it out of bounds of the Maryland basketball. Very physical game. 11.05 to play in the first half. It's 16 to 11, Blue Devils. Go 
Michael Jordan, remember, has four fouls on him. He's playing very aggressively. There it is. trailing by five and one of the reasons is they've had a hard time getting the ball into the post watch here this is Lonnie Baxter and Matt Christensen Baxter needs to screen Christensen off so he can get the opportunity to catch the ball and he does not Baxter just simply doesn't step into him watch on this closer shot Baxter is not going to use his body he allows Christensen to come over the top and the Maryland coaching staff telling Lonnie Baxter as he was going to the bench hey use that big body to keep Christensen on your back Nice play by Matt Christensen, but Lonnie Baxter is not catching the ball inside, and one of the reasons is that he's not doing a very good job working for position in there. Boozer checks back in. Christensen goes out of the game. 11.05 to play in the first half. It's Duke by five. Here's Morris working against Battier. Pass to Mingus. Had the close in look. And again, the quick hands of Battier. Battier, what a great job he does taking the ball from you in that position. Here's Boozer again. And he draws foul number two on Lonnie Baxter. Shane Battier is a guy, when he's around the basketball, he's always looking for a way to get his hands on it on defense. Just does a great job concentrating and watching the ball. As he slaps down, he's watching that basketball concentrating on it to try to make sure he gets the ball and not the hand. Battier, an outstanding free throw shooter, makes the first one. We've got four guys in this game who are on the first team all defensive team in the Atlantic Coast Conference, as well as four first team all ACC performers. And Boozer makes the second one. And now Duke has its largest lead. It's at seven. And Maryland is really in a little bit of trouble here. Lonnie Baxter has not been able to get involved in this game. And therefore, Maryland is struggling on offense. Maryland is at their best when they're combining the inside and outside game. And so far, they've been limited to the outside game. Morris misses that one. Here comes Williams. Gets it underneath the boozer and banks it in. And Lonnie Baxter just doesn't guard him on defense because he's got the two personal fouls. 20 to 11, Duke, as they explode. Gary Williams very upset with his Maryland Terrapins. They were back. There was a lot of red shirts back on defense, but none of them were ready to play. You can see four red shirts in your picture, but Boozer runs the court and catches the ball. It's actually a two on four, and Duke scored very easily. Well, for a chance to win $1 million at the half court line, don't miss the Bank of America Home Equity Million Dollar Dream Shot. For complete rules, visit bankofamerica.com slash sports. No purchase or transaction necessary. Bank of America, equal housing lender. Duke leads the Atlantic Coast Conference in scoring, scoring margin, three-point percentage, free throw percentage, turnover margin, and three points per game. They can solid club. They can certainly put points up on the board, and this There's is their stock and trade, an 11-2 run over the last two minutes and 30 seconds, and it has been a run built on defense. They're keeping the Maryland Terrapins away from what the Terrapins want to do. Lonnie Baxter trying to keep it alive, just as out of sync. Boozer kept him a couple of feet further from the basket than he wanted to go. Of course, the tough shot. And another offensive lead. Right now, everything going Duke's way, and they're just starting to explode. This game could get out of hand for Maryland in a hurry. It's 22 to 11 with 9.45 to play in the first half. You're playing Duke. You better bring your offensive game, and Maryland's offensive game has abandoned them right at the moment. Duke is not one of those teams you can really come back on either very easily. Here's a nice power move by Baxter, his first basket. Baxter just forced his way to the basket. That was probably the worst position he's had with the ball in his hands today. I don't know how he did that. That's more like the Lonnie Baxter, Gary Williams, and the terrible coaching staff wanted to see. Dunleavy, Boozer left alone. This will be called on Nate James. Terrence Morris doing an outstanding job on the boards. James picks up his second foul. Fourth rebound for Terrence Morris, who's going to sit down. You know, Gary Williams was upset because he thought he should have been called for a technical when he grabbed Larry Rose, the official. <laughs> 
Gary may not have coached in an ACC championship game before, but he knows all the maneuvers. Oh, he sure does. Dixon had that one blocked by Dunley. Boy, what a good decision not to force it back up. Shoot an off-balance shot. Juan Dixon has been quiet for Maryland. He has four points. And Carrawell picks up the foul. Carrawell really trying hard to stay with Dixon. And that's a very difficult task. Dixon extremely quick. See Danny Miller there who sprained his ankle earlier. Getting his ankle taped. His foul is on Blake, and the bucket will count. We talked about the strength of Jason Williams, and it was on display right there. Williams carries this ball right up into the face of Blake. A poor entry pass by Taj Holden. You got to throw that further down the court, and Williams just gets it and sets sail. Blake not able to stop him. Duke getting it done on defense and converting that on the offensive end. Jason Williams rattles it in, completes the three-point play. He now has six for the game. And the freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey, having a terrific first half. 25 to 13 Blue Devils. Maryland just having a very difficult time getting anything started. Dangerous pass to Moore. That's a tremendous catch by Moore. That ball was headed out of bounds. Here's Dixon, 14 on the shot clock. He'll fire from beyond the arc and hit it. A big three. Maryland needed it. And Maryland may need to find Dixon a little bit more. He's the only guy who looks as if he's in any sort of offensive rhythm at all out there. Watching him warm up, he was just raining threes. That would be the solution to the blue or the Terrapin Ills right at the moment. Here's Carrawell. Over to Battier from way beyond the York. Big lineup in the game right at the moment for Maryland. Morris from beyond the York. Here come the Terrapins. Okay, if you can't get the inside game going, then turn it over to the three-point shooters and see if you can loosen up that interior defense. Two big baskets by the Maryland Terrapins. Cuts the lead to six. Man-to-man -man defense for Maryland. And Holden is matched up with Battier. That's a difficult matchup out on the perimeter for Holden. And they put Martisic on Boozer. Boozer primarily inside player, so Martisic probably with an advantage down there because of his size. Blake with a rebound. Turps one alone. Stops beyond the arc. A great block out by Dunley. Here comes Carrawell. Be left open. Well, Dixon may have gotten a piece of that one. Pace of the game picks up, and I think Duke wants to slow it up a little bit, so they'll reset the offense. Boy, Duke just wearing Maryland out on the offensive boards. He gets eight offensive rebounds. Great anticipation by Blake. He knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Duke basketball, 17 remaining on the shot clock. 6.38 to play in the first half. Duke 25, Maryland 19. We'll be back right after this. Duke extended its lead to 12. Maryland now with two threes in a row. Cut it to six, Dan. It's been a very interesting game thus far. The matchups we've talked about haven't really materialized. Maryland not able to get it inside. That about the only inside basket they have. But Carlos Boozer has been very effective inside for the Duke Blue Devils. He's got eight points already. So Duke able to establish the inside game. Maryland having problems as Lonnie Baxter has struggled early in this game. In fact, Baxter's now on the bench with two personal fouls. Blake's defensive play knocked the ball out of bounds. Duke will have it. 17 seconds remain on the shot clock. Blake is so quick. Benny got caught in the air. They hold and touch that ball or that would have been a walk. The ball was halfway down, came back out. Dixon with the rebound. Here come the Terrapins. They're on a 6 0 run. Boy, as Dixon comes down the court, Carrawell finds him at the earliest opportunity. Now Blake comes out front. Go, 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 go. 
Taj Holt working down low. Turnaround jumper. Yes. Eight Boy, that's nothing a run. confident play by Taj Holden. We've talked about a number of freshmen. We haven't yet talked about Taj Holden. He's a guy who has had some big games for Maryland, and this is a situation with Baxter struggling, but Holden could make himself extremely valuable. Eight nothing run by Maryland, and they leave Carroll all alone. Nice screen on the inside, and Holden did not help very well. Terrence Morris was picked off by Battier. Pushes Duke's lead back to six. With very, a very, very heavy contact on the inside. These guys are not given an inch. Battier comes and sets the screen, and Holden needs to fall to the basket to help out, and he doesn't. Taj Holden not going to come into your picture, and on that screen, Holden has to step to the basket to help out Terrence Morris. That close to the goal, you can't allow a guy to run free. Great pass by Williams. I'll tell you this, on defense, Duke moves its feet, leverages its body better than any team in the country. Just have that feeling that Maryland needs another basket here to keep the little momentum that they've had. Baxter back in the game. Blake, beyond the arc. Wow, tough shot. That's for, that's for two. His foot was on the line. Blake asserting himself offensively more than we've seen him in his prior two games. Well, he's tournament. He hit that three earlier. That was his 99th three-point attempt of the year, so he will take the shots. But you're right. He's shooting more today and looking for the shot for off. Battier. Well, that is a great play by Blake to get out and pressure that shot. Morris looks inside. Baxter with the turnaround. Morris with the follow. Ronnie Baxter continues struggling to catch the ball inside and score effectively, but Terrence Morris has stepped up. He's now got seven. And that was just great hustle going to the basket. Seven points and six rebounds in the first half for Terrence Moore. And Duke's 12-point lead has been cut to two. Christensen. Still can't get it to go down. And finally, they're going to get a foul on Martisic. That's 10 offensive rebounds in the first half for the Duke Blue Devils. Part of the problem that you have with the Maryland Terrapins is that they have not switched effectively on defense every time down. That was that last play where Carrowell came open underneath. You really need to switch on the inside and you need to keep pressure on the ball so the passer can't see that easily. Christensen, who is only a 59% free throw shooter, draws all iron on his first one. With the extra possessions have really been an important factor. But the Duke Blue Devils have not really converted effectively. And he has his first point of the game. Carewell, for the most part, has done a pretty good job keeping Dixon quiet. Dixon answers your quick move. What a, quick move. What a in. quick move. You get ready to jump against him, and he still has the quickness with the dribble. He goes right by. Cuts the lead to one. on the defensive end, doing a much better job pressuring the Blue Devils. Back outside. This is James. Boy, what a rebound by Carrollwell. And Carrollwell has fouled the bucket will count. Foul is on Mike Martis. It's Gary Williams. Gary Williams' team doing such a great job trying to pressure the ball. They run at the shot, and Martisic has Battier blocked out, but nobody blocks out Christensen and Carrowell. Duke's guys are Maryland's guys running at the shooters, and as a result, Duke guys are available underneath for the offensive rebounds, and they're just attacking the offensive board. Carrowell, the only starter on this Duke team who will not be back. He is a senior. 31-27 Duke will return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. www.theacc.com, the official website of the Atlantic Coast Conference, is your home for all the latest league stats, standings, news, and features. Theacc.com has a new design, and it's packed with all of the information fans need to stay on top of the action in the ACC. 
Come check out our exclusive previews and recaps, live in-game stats, highlights, and sound files of your favorite ACC players and coaches. ACC.com, the place for serious ACC fans. For both fans and athletes alike, sportsmanship is about respect. Respect, respect for the participants and also for the game. Whether you're cheering your team to victory or competing at the highest level, do, do it, it with, with class. class and dignity. Don't let your emotions get the best of you in the stands or, or on, on the, the court. court. Remember, showing poor sportsmanship will hurt your team. The Atlantic, Atlantic Coast, Coast Conference stresses sportsmanship. Without it, the game's over. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet. Then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sport Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now, Regal comes with something that'll make it even easier to drive. Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. Welcome back inside the Charlotte Coliseum. Our Chrysler Plymouth game summary looks like this. Maryland really having a tough time with Duke on the offensive board. Duke has those 18 extra possessions and they've scored 14 points as a result of those possessions. Maryland is actually very fortunate to be within four points. It was 25 to 13 Duke. Maryland has closed a gap 31 to 27. Let's go over to Gil McGregor. Yeah, we were talking about who's coming back next year for Duke. The thing about Shane Battier, his brother Jeremy is an All-American receiver in football. He's coming to Duke. He plans to walk on the basketball court. Battier says, I look forward to spending a year with my brother away from home. To say that, it means he's going to be back in senior season in Durham, North Carolina. All right, Gil. Terrapins with a basketball. This is Terrence Morris. Turnaround jump hook. And Duke comes up with it. They've got numbers. Three on two. Williams pulls up. Miller back in the ball game. And Baxter is fouled. Foul will be on Boozer. Wait, that's... The review of our nationwide ACC Scholar Athletes concludes with Virginia's Colin Ducharme. The junior from Richmond, Virginia, has a 3.49 grade point average in physics, a lot like Dan Bonner did at UVA. Congratulations, our ACC Scholar Athlete from Virginia. This is the first Maryland trip to the free throw line in this game. And Baxter, who really struggled from the line yesterday, hits his first one. 2.48 to play in the first half. 31-29 as Baxter makes them both. And you know, it's very interesting. The Duke Blue Devils, they've gone now 10 minutes in this game without a turnover. So Duke playing pretty well in terms of taking care of the basketball. And again, I'll point out that Maryland's probably fortunate to only be down two. But you know what? With that said, you have to believe that Maryland will go in at intermission if it stays close. Thinking, we didn't play very well, and here we are which will help the confidence. Here's Boozer, left wide open again. Gary Williams is beside himself. The defense is just not helping out. The mistake was out on the perimeter, Tim, where they went for the steal, and that left Dunleavy all alone. It's tough enough to play Duke even up. I mean, they get a man advantage, <laughs> they're even better. Blue Devils by four. Hit the camera on top of the shot clock, so it will be Duke Ball. That's the camera you're talking about. Way above the basket, actually above the shot clock. Michael Dunleavy gets to the basket because Dixon is behind him, and they go to help out against Dunleavy, and Boozer's all alone. Rotation very poor on the inside for Maryland. Blue Devils trying to extend their lead here. Williams, great penetration to Boozer. Another rebound by Terrence Morris. He's had a fine first half. Boy, a lot of contact. Dixon gets it back. Second time the ball slipped out of his hands. Baxter. Morris. Yes, and that's, that's for three. three. Morris now has ten points in the first half. And it's a one-point game. Faithful on their feet. Ella. 
And Williams Dixon, is hammered. He's going. Juan Dixon's going to pick up that foul. We showed you briefly the three-point field goals in the game. The Duke Blue Devils, who have scored 30 three-point goals coming into this game, only one, one for 11 are the Blue Devils from beyond the three-point arc. And Maryland, a team that doesn't rely as heavily on the three-point baskets, they've already scored four, four for nine. Williams makes the first. He now has six points. Jason Williams. At 21 assists in the first two games here at the tournament. 21 is the tournament record. Oh my. Dixon at the other end banks it in. They let him get deep on him, fell asleep for the home run ball. That was a great pass. I mean, that is not an easy pass to throw, and he threw it right on the money. Who plays quarterback at there? <laughs> he's, on, he's, he's on the basketball team. Calvin McCall. We're under a minute to play, and it's a one-point game. Dunleavy. Shot, top oh shot. Nothing but net. Boy, he plays with a lot of confidence. Shot clock at 30, game clock at 42. Dixon was calling for the ball. Looking for help, almost throws it away. Boy, that's a great save by Blake. Oh, great what a play, play by, by Blake. Steve Blake. He not only saved the turnover, but he took the ball and took it to his basket, and his dad loves it. One point game. Shot clocks off. First half about to come to an end. See if they try to go inside the booster and get that third foul on back. Carrollwell back to Battier. They get plenty of time. Taken away by Nicholas. To Blake. Wow, what a first half. are loving it. Duke fans are still confident. The ACC showcase game, the championship game, has a one-point differential at the half. So that'll do it. Duke 37, Maryland 36. Mike Hogwood will have our halftime activities when we return. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Sleep In, by Chick-fil-A, by your local Jeep dealers, by Amoco, by Advance Auto Parts, and by Nationwide Insurance. Since the long distance shot of the week, our shot this week is actually a series of shots. Duke was 13 for 30 from three-point range yesterday in their semifinal win over Wake Forest. Mike Dunleavy was perfect behind the arc, while Nate James was four for six as the Blue Devils up their tournament total to 30. And that's our all-tail long distance shot of the week. Everything you would expect in a championship battle, one point separates Duke and Maryland. Hi again, everyone. Mike Hogwood with you again. And it was a 12-point Duke lead, and I thought for a moment maybe Duke's going to have one of those huge explosions and blow Maryland off the court. But Maryland's a championship team as well, and they showed a lot of fight in coming back and playing strong. Time now to tell you about our best of the ACC. It is brought to you by Sleep In. Look at some ACC tournament career stats. Lynn Chapel, career points, edges out Tim Duncan. Career rebounds, Duncan has that honor over Ronnie Shavlik, one of the great names in NC State basketball history. Career assists, look at all the Tar Heels in that category. Ed Coda, Drew Barry's there, Derek Phelps, Jimmy Black as well. Carlos Boozer inside, he has 10 points to lead Duke. Juan Dixon, 11 to lead Maryland. One point game. Picture this. In less than a year, my little girl will have her license. And, most likely, she'll have her first ticket not long after that. Chances are, Nationwide can help. We recognize that families have different drivers with different driving records. Not all of which are, shall we say, picture perfect. Have a good day. I cannot believe he's doing Call a Nationwide agent today. Nationwide. Insurance. Financial services. On your side.
I take your car? I need your keys so I can drive your car. He was all wrong for you. I think I was a freak. Oh, yeah. Oh, that works. At Bank of America, we ask the right questions to find the right solutions for you. Uh -huh. I am good. You Things betcha. like our money manager account, which turns ordinary checking into a powerful investing tool. Sweet. So what is it, Ted? IPO, tech, stock, internet startup, what? My checking account rocks. Financial solutions. Ooh. Come to Papa. That fit you. Let's talk. ACC Flashback, presented by Food Lion. The 1995 ACC Championship game was one of the best games in conference history. North Carolina and Wake Forest were tied going into the final seconds of overtime in Greensboro. The Deeks took the lead when Randolph Childress, who'd already scored 35 points in the game, hit a driving shot with four seconds remaining. The Tar Heels had one final chance, but Jerry Stackhouse's shot bounced off the rim and Pierce Landry's tip-in just missed as the Demon Deacons won their first ACC tournament title since 1962. That's a look at our Food Lion ACC flashback. We told you about the strong performances in the first half from Carlos Boozer and Juan Dixon. How about Terrence Morris and Chris Carrowell? They are both in double figures as well with 10 points each to lead their respective teams. Quite a battle. Got some other battles going on as we check out our Bud Light scoreboard in the SEC championship game in Atlanta at the half. Auburn is leaving Arkansas. The Big 12 championship will start later today between Iowa State and Oklahoma and the Big Ten title game between Michigan State and Illinois as we get down to selection Sunday to decide who's in the NCAA tournament. I can tell you one thing both these teams are in they're battling now for the ACC title. If you think all hot sauces are alike think again some are just too darn hot and others are too darn bland. Hey could you pass the Texas Pete. Right here, partner. Hey, thanks. Texas Pete, the South's leading hot sauce, is perfect to lasso the flavor of all your favorite dishes. See you around. Texas Pete, it's the bottle with a cowboy. Dodge Dakota brings you a startling new advancement. Doors, great big ones, on the driver's side and the passenger side each with windows that go all the way down. So what's the big deal about two great big wide opening doors? Nothing, but four is a different story. Real truck, real doors. Dodge Dakota Quad Cab, different. When you were young, matters of the heart were simple. Now your heart may need more attention. At Cape Fear Valley's Heart Center, we provide the diagnostics to detect heart disease. When needed, we can perform open heart surgery. And our rehabilitation program can help you return to an active and satisfying life. Quality cardiac care for someone close to your heart. The Heart Center of Cape Fear Valley Health System in Fayetteville. Hey, do you know where your child will go to college? Do you know how much it will cost? Probably more than you think. That's why you need to call North Carolina's College Vision Fund today. You decide the amount of your monthly payment, build up secure savings, and get real tax breaks. So your child can go to any college, anywhere. Call the College Vision Fund today, so you'll be ready when they are. Coverage you can count on. Weekdays on WRAL's Morning News. Geico Direct presents this ACC moment. For the first time since their championship in 1984, the Maryland Terrapins are in the finals of the ACC tournament. The Terrapins survived the hard-fought semifinal matchup against NC State, defeating the Wolfpack 64-61. Maryland had big games from Juan Dixon and Lonnie Baxter to reach the finals for the first time in their last six drives. 
That's our Geico Direct ACC moment. The ACC Tournament, the 47th edition in the final game. The championship battle one point separates Duke and Maryland. And certainly we've had some great Southern hospitality from the Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. Duke had that big lead. And as we throw it back to our game announcers, Tim and Dan, guys, I was really impressed with the way Maryland fought through that offensive problem, hung tough, and are now down by only a point. Yeah, I think they have to feel very good about that, Michael. As a matter of fact, Morris and Dixon combined for 21 points, and Carowell and Boozer combined for 20. It's been a very physical ball game. It's been the kind of basketball game that we expected, and one of the big matchups that we talked about was Juan Dixon and Chris Carowell, and they have not disappointed. Juan Dixon with 10 points in the first half, a variety of moves, as he was four for nine. Dixon with Carowell shadowing him all the way, as we say, has nonetheless been able to score those 10 points. And Chris Carowell, who we thought maybe he'd step up offensively today, he surely has. Four of six from the field, a variety of driving moves to the basket. Each of those young men has played very well. The key stat of the game probably is Duke only one for 11 from beyond the three-point arc. They're averaging 15 three-pointers made per game in this tournament. And our Dodge halftime statistics also show you that Duke took 10 free throws. Maryland only two. Maryland playing fairly passively on defense. Maryland playing fairly passively on defense, and it comes, you can really see it in our extra possessions. Extra possessions, combination of offensive rebounds and turnovers. Duke has scored 14 points as a result of their extra possessions. One guy who hasn't benefited from that is Shane Batty. Only, got two, only has two points this afternoon. You wonder how long that'll last, though. Shane Bettier has had some of his best games against the University of Maryland. One-point game. We'll be back to start the second half right after this. You ready? Turtle Wax. Grizzly Grill Guards. Rancho Shocks. Gas Cans. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. We need some help. We need a lot of help. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Why are business travelers choosing sleep in? The well-lit grounds? The electronic locks? The walk-in showers? Complimentary breakfast? Because it's a place that understands the needs of the business traveler. It's all those things. Plus the service. Hey, knock it off. Is incredible. If you're traveling on business, stay at Sleep In, in a class by itself. Hey, Jeff. Now, listen, I got it right here, buddy. It's icy cold and tasting great. Now, come on, Jeff, you tell me. Is there anybody in this world who deserves this here Pepsi more than you? Hi, Jeff. See you later, Jeff. Hey, that's what I call motivation. I don't know where she came yeah. from. The joy cola. Don't worry, Jeff. There's always Daytona. Good evening, folks. Hold the door. Hold the door. Hey, hold, hold that elevator. Hold one more. One more. Whoa. Hey, hey, open the door. Let me get that, please. People, somebody press the button. Frank, Ma, I can see you in there. Please open the door. Hey, hey. Come on, we're reasonable people here. Hey, whoa. Oh, that's my Bud Light! Come Hit on. it, Frank. Whoa. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. I can't shake them! Is this going on? Make it a Bud Light. ACC Basketball is brought to you by Alto. By Dodge Trucks. By Aquafina. By Geico Direct. By Chick-fil-A. And by Buick. I watched this team many times. University of Maryland back in 1958. Under Bud Milligan won the title. Maryland has only won two of those tournaments, 1958 and 1984. You see the score at the halftime. Now let's take a look at the keys to the game. The second half will start this way. 
The Baxter factor. Maryland's really got to get Lonnie Baxter involved in the game. Baxter only one for five with four points in the first half. And Shane Battier, we mentioned he only has two points, 0 for three from beyond the three-point range. They need some baskets from Shane Battier. Big news, let's go to Gil McGregor. Hey guys, you know, I talked to uh, the coaches at Duke University. I said it was two first halves played in the first half. They felt they gave up too many open looks. Maryland doesn't know how much they're going to get out of Danny Miller. It may be limited, and he may not be back at all. Well, the word we have is Miller is out. That would hurt Maryland tremendously. Williams starts things off with a three for Duke. Williams now has the only two three-point baskets of the game for Duke, and there they try to go right inside to Baxter, and Morris cleans up. Lonnie Baxter did not make that shot, but he approached it with a great deal more confidence than we saw in the first part of the first half. It's going to be interesting, Dan, to see and get a gauge on Maryland here early on, see if they are more physical. One of the problems with Miller being out is now Drew Nicholas is going to have to match up against Chris Carrowell, and I would say that's an advantage, Carrowell. Here's a defensive stop for Maryland. Out on the break, Lake takes it the distance. Oh, that shot was blocked by Carrowell. What a great play. Now the numbers are for Duke. 42 to 38, Blue Devils. Each team loves to turn its opponent's mistakes into baskets. Maryland wasn't able to convert, the Duke Blue Devils were. Already we've had some contact here in the second half. Looks like they're going to let them play. We'll see who gets more physical and who plays the tougher defense. Baxter just lost the ball going up. He is really struggling today. Here go the Terrapins. Juan Dixon. Pulls up and hits the deuce. And that's the right shot in that situation. Duke is back pretty well on defense. Dixon is a great pull-up shooter, particularly inside that 15-foot range. That's really a good decision on the fast break by Juan Dixon. Carrawell will fire beyond the arc. Splash! As we mentioned, this is a team that has averaged 15 three-point baskets made per game in this tournament. You didn't expect them to hold on one very long. Five point Duke lead. Baxter. Big rebound by Carrawell. That's not the shot that Gary Williams would prefer Lonnie Baxter to take. You can sense some frustration building for Lonnie Baxter. Here's Baxter, gets his hand on it. Nicholas takes it, gets it to play. That's good help on the inside. This foul will be called on Williams. Boy, Blake was fortunate there that the whistle blew for the foul because he was just about to travel with that basketball. Pretty good crossover dribble there, wouldn't you say, out on the top. We've got his pass Jason Williams. Two fouls now. He can break Jason some ankles. Williams. He can handle the ball very, very well. Oh, Battier just took the ball right away, trying to lob it up over top of Shane Battier, and now he commits the offensive foul. Called on Battier. Boy, Gary Williams is really upset with Lonnie Baxter. 17-20 to play in the championship game. Duke 45, Maryland 40. This is Nicholas from way outside. Baxter gets it back. Blake with a tough shot falling away. Baxter with a follow. Now Maryland working the offensive board. Boozer comes down with it. And you want to be careful if you're Maryland now. You don't want to foul. You have a flurry like that on the offensive board. Sometimes the tendency is to keep after the ball after you've lost it. Battier for three. Yes! <laughs> Gary Williams calls a 30-second timeout. The intensity of this game has just been ratcheted up about six notches. Blue Devils lead by eight with 16.45 to play. We'll return after this message from the ACC. For nearly 50 years, the Atlantic Coast Conference has excelled both on and off the field. 
Our corporate partners have helped sustain this tradition of excellence through their financial support of our student athletes and a variety of community outreach programs. We're proud that our corporate partners have joined with the Atlantic Coast Conference in this important effort. Gary Williams has seen his Maryland Terrapins fall behind by eight points, and one of the reasons is Duke has found the three-point stroke in the second half. Carowell, who has hit one. Williams has hit one. Battier has hit one. This is the Shane Battier. They only made one three-point basket in the first half. They've got three already in the second half. They're three for three, and that's why they've stretched out the lead. Carowell tried to get the steal from Dixon. Dixon has his shot blocked. Officials will confer to see who touched it last. It'll belong to Maryland. Well, that's a break for the Maryland Terrapins. Dixon, not much there. Maryland, or Duke defending pretty well. 20 on the shot clock. Blake will set the offense. Duke trying to match up man to man. Duke now anticipating passes, jumping out quickly. Here's Morris. When Nicholas got fouled on the rebound, it must be this basket. Maryland or Duke had 11 offensive rebounds in the first half at this basket, and now Maryland is wearing out the Blue Devils on the offensive board with five offensive rebounds, and we haven't played four minutes in this half. Dunleavy checks back in. Nate James will go out for Duke. At the line is Drew Nicholas, the 6'3", 175-pound freshman from New York. He's a 62 percent Oh, that's right. Goes to Baxter, and Baxter gets two. Nicholas was at the line because he thought he was shooting. I thought he was shooting. Well, they'll take that dunk from Baxter. Maryland has needed to get him involved in the offense. He's got six in the game. 15-59 to play in the game. Here's a steal by Dixon. That's for two. Boy, Watt Dixon on did a great job staying after that ball. Just beat Dunleavy to the ball. Big couple of possessions for Maryland. You get the idea that Duke is ready to go on one of their patented runs, but those two baskets, the dunk by Baxter and then the steal and basket by Dixon, have sort of blunted that for the moment. Williams with the penetration of Boozer for the easy lay-in. Boy, that's a nice job by Williams. He's working so hard, and that time he beat Blake out front. Six assists now for Williams. I'll tell you this, Boozer, who scored eight points Thursday night, wasn't the scoring factor yesterday, is certainly a factor today with 14 points. When he just does a nice job maintaining his position against Lonnie Baxter that time. Baxter needs to be stronger with the ball. Dunleavy gets it back. Outside to go to Battier. Battier is fouled. Terrence Morris claiming that Battier leaned into him. First foul, though, on Terrence Morris. Duke does play a physical brand of basketball. There's no question about it. You got to play it back if they're letting you play. But Battier takes the ball and drives to the basket and jumps up in the air, and Morris jumps on top of him. That's pretty That's clear. Foul. Yeah. 14 44 to play. Battier with just five points. You know, it's interesting, this ACC tournament, the tradition of the tournament, everybody talks about all the upsets and everything like that, and there, are, there are usually are upsets, but we've played 46 tournaments prior to this one, and 23 times the number one seed has won the tournament, and 10 times the number two seed has won the tournament. Duke's largest lead of the game was 12. It's now at eight. We have 14.44 left to play. If you think all hot sauces are alike, Think again. Some are just too darn hot. And others are too darn bland. Hey, could you pass the Texas Pete? Right here, partner. Hey, thanks. Texas Pete, the South's leading hot sauce, is perfect to lasso the flavor of all your favorite dishes. See you around. Texas Pete, it's the bottle with a cowboy. Picture this, a husband with no tickets, 
a son with no luck, and a business with no let up. What's in your family picture? Chances are, Nationwide can help. Our insurance covers the different needs of different drivers, from the perfect to the not so. Call a Nationwide agent today. Nationwide, insurance, financial services, on your side. It changed the rules, and with each innovation, its reputation grows. Now Dodge Ram is offering an even higher output Cummins turbo diesel on 2001 models with more power and more raw torque than any full-size diesel pickup on the planet. Leadership can be a heavy burden. We'll handle it. Now get a $1,000 cash allowance on 2000 model year Rams. Has anybody seen my checkbook? At Bank of America, we think your checking account should fit you perfectly. So we ask the right questions. Do you like to bank on your PC? What? At an ATM? In person? Maybe you're looking for an account that saves money and rewards you, like our Advantage Checking. What? Point is, we'll find the solution that fits you, even if you can't find it yourself. Bank of America. Let's talk. 52-44 Duke, you see the feet of Danny Miller, who sprained his ankle in the end of the first half, comes back in here, doesn't have his shoe on, and that's not a good slightly. sign. Unless his name is John and he's somebody's son. Well, that's even a worse sign because now he has ice on it, and once you put ice on it, you won't be back. Well, it'd particularly be hard to run up and down the court like that. 52-44 Duke, 14-44 to play. And Lonnie Baxter is a guy who has really struggled in this game. And that has been a drawback for the Maryland Terrapins. Pretty good defense that time by Jason Williams. Jason Williams having a marvelous game defensively and offensively. In the second half, the Duke Blue Devils 5 of 5, Maryland 4 of 14. And this looks remarkably like that first game up in College Park where Maryland got many, many more shots but couldn't convert them. Oh, good quick move by Locke. The walk, the turnover, and Maryland will get it back. When Morris thinks he's got a great opportunity inside, he spins past, and that's just a great block by Christensen. Maryland trying to get in some semblance of an offense and can't do it. Here's Morris to Baxter, who loses the handle going up. Boy, that was a good pass by Morris. Unbelievable. Man-to-man -man defense for Maryland. This is Battier, back up top to Dunleavy. Now Holden is in the game trying to guard Battier. It's a tough matchup out of the perimeter. Here's Williams, he has 11 points. He's been looking for a shot. Here he is again, the running one-hander, and he gets the roll. Boy, a lot of hands up there, but nobody touched it when it was in the cylinder. The lead is 10 for Duke. And now Maryland is in one of those zones where they're going to have to score a couple of baskets or they risk losing track of the Duke Blue Devils here. Maryland hit a couple of big threes in a row when they fell behind by 12 in the first half. Here's Baxter. Boy, he missed that one. Boy, Gary Williams asking for some help from the officials, but Lonnie Baxter is just not converting the way he has all year. Baxter, I, I haven't seen him all season long struggle like this. That's a basket that he almost always makes. Two for 11 now for Lonnie Baxter. Although he struggled yesterday until the end and came on strong. Morris went to shoot the three-point shot and changed his mind, tried to pass it, and almost lost the ball. All the Terrapins look a little gun shy right now. Duke has, has made all its field goal attempts in the second half. Six of six. Blake gets him in the offense again, looking for Morris. Real good defense by Dunley. Shot clock down to 15. Plenty time. Tough shot by Blake. Not a good shot. That's not the shot that Maryland needed at that point. And now they've, they've got to get it done on the defensive end.
Boy, Carewell's eyes lit up when he saw Baxter on him, but he's not able to get it to go. Maryland makes the stop. Now they've got to score. This is holding. He's fouled by Battier. And that's the second on Shane Battier. Duke picks up a foul on that play, but I don't think that's a foul that Mike Krzyzewski particularly minds because Battier outplaying very aggressively on the ball, and that's characterized the Duke defense in the second half. They've really pushed Maryland out of just about everything they want to do with aggressive defense on the ball. Way outside to Juan Dixon. And we haven't heard anything from Dixon in the second half. Carowell has watched Dixon. Williams has watched Dixon. And both have done a nice job. Boy, Boy, that's way ball. outside. There's Dixon with the follow. And that's how effective Dixon can be. He just goes to and finds the ball. That time he gets in great position. If that ball hits the rim, he doesn't get it. But he's where he needs to be, fields the air ball, and with a quick shot helps the Maryland Terrapins. Terrapins down by eight. And there's a nice, foul. nice defensive play by Taj Holt. The Duke Blue Devils trying to attack to the basket, and Maryland getting in pretty good position. 11.39 to play the championship game. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Good morning, Tommy. Amazing, that car never ages. To help keep your car young, protect your engine with Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Add more life to your car. The inspiration for the new LeSabre didn't just come from a research center or design facility. It also came from your family. Introducing the all-new 2000 LeSabre, re-engineered with more safety features than any other car in its class. The new 2000 LeSabre by Buick. Get a free faceplate in the colors of your favorite ACC team when you buy a Nokia 5180 digital phone and play the colors of the conference scratch game. Every card offers a prize or value. ACC Basketball is brought to you in part by Toyota. Blue Devils have pretty much controlled the second half thus far. And it's been offensive output for the Duke Blue Devils. They only shot 38% in the first half, but they've come out red hot in the second half, and they're getting it done in a lot of different ways. Taking it to the basket, three-point opportunities, three for three from three-point range in the second half are the Duke Blue Devils. And when you're scoring from three and scoring six of seven field goal attempts overall, it's no wonder Mike Krzyzewski's team has taken the eight-point lead. 11.39 to play. If you're just joining us, Danny Miller out of the ball game for Maryland with a sprained ankle. As we mentioned, Duke one for 11 in the first half from three-point range, three of three in the second. Taj Holden shuffles his pivot foot. Turnover Maryland, that's number 11 for the Terps. One Dixon for Maryland as they struggle with their offense is eight of 11 from the field. A lot of turnovers in the game. The rest of the Terrapin, 12 for 40. So it'd be obvious that Maryland needs to get the ball to Juan Dixon a little bit more. John Madry and Freddie Kyle supplying the numbers today. Here's a pass to Nicholas, left alone. And he throws up an air ball. This was off Taj Holden. So Duke will have it. When Maryland really struggling, you're in a situation where you have Juan Dixon on the bench, and so you'd like to try to get it inside to Morris or Baxter. Gary Williams did not like the quick, long shot by Nicholas. He's got quiet in the Charlotte Coliseum. 
Here's Dunleavy with a little hook. Terrapins need a bucket badly. Nicholas again, this is for two. Oh. Tries to bank it in, and the put back by Martisich. Wait, two more offensive rebounds on that sequence by the Maryland Terrapins. And they've dominated the offensive boards in the second half after being dominated in the first half. 54-48. Big lineup in the game right at the moment for Merrill. Battier loses the handle. But he look how back. quickly he recovers. There's a total offensive rebounds for the game and for Maryland. Ten of them coming in the second half. Carrawell got tied up, picked up his dribble, and Morris was smothered, and he called timeout. 10-19 to play. What do you think, Coach? I think it's it really hurts Maryland to not have Danny Miller available. It changes the matchups that are available against the Duke Blue Devils. Last time these two met was at Cameron Indoor Stadium. February 9th, the Maryland Terrapins had been on a long drought against Duke. Duke came out and got an early start. Carroll. That's first meeting. Again, we said Maryland took 85 shots in that game, but did not shoot a high percentage. But then the second game on February the 9th, Juan Dixon was absolutely fabulous. Got Maryland going with 31 points. Maryland had lost six straight to Duke before that game February 9th. That win at Cameron. There's a look at the foot, the ankle of Danny Miller. And that forces Gary Williams to play Drew Nicholas, a little bit smaller guy at about six feet four, or go with Taj Holt or Mike Martisich. So different kind of lineup that Maryland has played most of the year. It's always tough to change your rotation in a game like this. Shot clock at five. Carrawell lets it fly from way outside. Martisich with the rebound. Said Maryland needed to pick it up on defense, and they have. Now let's see if they can convert on the offense. Man. Martisich wide open. That's the throws it away. If you're going to try to thread the needle from that spot, you've got to have a lot more pace on the ball than Martis has had. Great penetration by Williams in the soft one-hander. And now Blake tries the tough pass inside to Holden and throws it away. Gary Williams was telling him to slow it down. 9.38 to play, and the Blue Devils are in control. Gives it back. To Holden, to Martisic, the bank. Where big guys run on the court, good things usually happen. Nice job by Martisic to get his seven foot frame down there. Lead is down to six. Each team trying to force things on offense here in the last couple of possessions. Again, Williams. And let's see what they got. They got Boozer on the push. So Carlos Boozer, that's three on Boozer. Three personal fouls, and he got Lonnie Baxter in trouble early, but now Boozer has the fouls piling up. Boozer battling for position inside. Boozer's going to come in, and he pushes Mike Martisic in the back, right in the right-hand portion of your screen. That's what happens to Martisic. You hustle, you get in good position. Juan Dixon and Lonnie Baxter have come back into the game for Maryland. Martisich did a nice job while he was in there. Here's Nicholas. This is beyond the arc. Nicholas hit four of those yesterday. Hadn't been able to buy one today. Good move by Morris. Goes strong to the hoop. He has 14 points. 30-second timeout. And all of a sudden, the momentum has changed. And one of the reasons that the momentum has changed him is the offensive rebounds. In the first half, Duke had 11 offensive rebounds. Maryland only had six. In this half, Maryland has 11 offensive rebounds, and Duke does not have any offensive rebounds. The Blue Devils built their lead in the second half on the strength of their three-point shooting, and the last couple of times down the court, they've tried to force things on offense and turned it over and allowed Maryland to get out and run, and this is Big Mike Martisich running the court. A nice pass from Taj Holden. Martisich came in, he scored four points, and then Morris with the strong power move, and it's a two-point game. So Duke led by 12 in the first half, and Maryland made a pretty good run at him, and then a 10-point lead here in the second half, and Maryland now is close to the four.
coaches at the scorer's table now with official Mike Wood. Well, it may be an issue about the score. They had 56 to 54 up on the scoreboard. But of course, the scoreboard does not contain the official score. You'd like it to be the same score. Had me fooled. And so after checking the book, they made sure that the score up on the scoreboard, which is 56 to 52, is correct. Unfortunately, here at the scores table, I mean here at the broadcast table, we go by that scoreboard. So it's all right. squared it's okay. away now. Here's a foul on Taj Holden. Now, Maryland hit one of those two-point baskets, and they gave him a four-point basket, and Gary Williams would like to have that. But... Shane Battier working on Taj Holden. Two Williams. Maryland with over two team fouls here, and we've played almost 11 and a half, a little more than 11 and a half minutes in the second half. Mike Krzyzewski was not happy about that. Let the officials know. Inside they go. This is Boozer with the turnaround and the easy shot. Boozer just did a great job getting himself right down almost underneath the basket. Baxter simply cannot allow him to get that deeply into the lane. He's now got 16 points. 58-52 Blue Devils. And Dixon gets the offensive foul for the hook. That's two fouls now against Juan Dixon. And another turnover for the Terrapins. The problem with that move is you stick that arm around, it's right in front of the official. This is exactly what the official sees. He puts that armor and goes spinning around. And even though there's not a lot of contact, that's almost an automatic for a referee. Maryland still in its man-to-man -man defense. Outside, Williams for three. What a game he's playing. Jason Williams, the freshman, now with 18 points. And just like that, Duke pushes the lead back up to 61-52. And the Maryland timeout there. They crawl back in the game, and then Duke hits them with a spurt, and then they spend a lot of time crawling back in the game. Gary Williams has to get the kind of a streak that can get his team in front. You don't like playing from behind all the time. Carlos Boozer. Matched up inside against Baxter, and he just finds Williams. Nicholas turned his head to look inside to help out against Boozer, and Williams does a nice job getting position. Now, here, the last time Boozer got position inside, that's why Nicholas turned his head, because Boozer's been operating so effectively inside. You've got to drop down inside to help out. That's the classic combination of inside play and outside play. Duke has five three-point field goals, four of them in the second half. You see that gives them 35 for the tournament. Now the record's 41. And you made that point earlier that they had relied heavily on their three-point shooting in the tournament the first two games and here again today. Baxter banks it in with a power move. And Baxter, that's eight points for Baxter now as he starts to heat up a little bit, and that's good news for the Maryland Terrapins. Here we go, work hard. Time now becoming a factor. 7-18 to play. Man-to-man -man defense for Maryland. Remember Danny Miller out with the sprained ankle. Taj Holt playing for Miller by the time. Shot clock at 10. Williams gets it to Battier beyond the arc. Big, big rebound by Boozer. And the putback. Ball still loose. Blake comes up with it. Blake is left alone and throws it away. Did not pull the trigger when he was wide open. The trigger he should have pulled was the early pass to Juan Dixon. 6.47 to play. Duke 61, Maryland 54. Good evening, folks. Hold the door. Hold the door. Hey, hold, hold that elevator. Hold one more. One more. Whoa. Hey, hey open the door. Can somebody get that, please? People, somebody press the button. Frank, come on, I can see you in there. Please open the door. Hey, hey. Come on, we're reasonable people here. Hey, whoa. Oh, that's my Bud Light! Hit it, Frank. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. I can't shake them! Is this going up? Make it a Bud Light. Why are business travelers choosing sleep in? The well-lit grounds? The electronic locks? The walk-in showers? Complimentary breakfast? Because it's a place that understands the needs of the business traveler. 
It's all those things. Plus the service. Hey, knock it off. Is incredible. If you're traveling on business, stay at Sleep In. In a class by itself. New Dakota Quad Cab comes with a nice big bed and big back doors that lead to a great big cab for putting things you don't want outside, inside, and vice versa. Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, oops, that's better, outside. Dodge Dakota Quad Cab. Big room, big doors, big difference. Championship Sunday in Charlotte, North Carolina. Two heavyweights, Duke and Maryland, in the showcase game of the Atlantic Coast Conference. 647 still to play, Dan. Tim, and one of the key factors, watch Jason Williams right here. You talk about transition defense. Watch how he fakes out Steve Blake on this particular play. Williams acts like he's going to go to Blake. He stops, fakes him, and now cuts to the corner. And Blake is forced either to decide shot or pass. He, the best place would have been to go to Juan Dixon. But Williams able to guard two guys. He faked Blake out, covered up Dixon, left Blake with nothing to do except the long shot or the pass across the court. And the other Terrapins thought he was going to shoot the ball. They were looking for a rebound, not the pass. So the lead for Duke stays at seven. Duke, a dangerous team to try to trap because if they beat the trap, they've got deadly three-point shooters. Looking inside the Boozer, Max are doing a better job pushing Boozer a little further from the basket. Shot clock at 14. Took plenty of time left in the game. Down to 10. That means Williams penetrates. Oh, oh nice job, but Baxter's going to get called for the goal tank. I'm not sure that shot would have made it anywhere. That was a very, very close play. Baxter, you notice how Baxter didn't really hit it very hard. I think he knew that it was close. Wanted to just get a hand on it to deflect it away. Bucket counts. Here's Dixon. Running one-hander. Remember, what a rebound! Remember, Dixon had 31 in the win over Duke February 9th. Dixon today was 17. And now Maryland looking for a big defensive stop. We've just gone under six minutes. And Maryland sure does not want Duke to get the double-digit lead. Duke content to play a little bit more slowly. By nine. Here's Boozer. Bucket counts. He'll go to the line. Boy, that's a very effective play on the inside. Battier draws the defense and gets it to Boozer, and Boozer's got to be ready to catch this ball, and he was, and then he takes it hard to the basket. Boozer that's, having that a terrific great game. Strength. He is having a terrific game with 18 points. And it's all uphill now for the University of Maryland. Take you back through the window of time, 1980. Lefty Grizzell was the coach at Maryland, making his fourth appearance in the title game. Number six seed Duke took the number one seed Maryland right down to the wire. Mike Jaminski, the putback, Albert King shot off the glass. Buck Williams undercut going for the rebound. Everybody talked about that play. They still talk about that play. Watch to the right of your screen. Here goes Buck Williams. There's the undercut, no call. Then four years later, sophomore Len Bias scored 26 points, shot over 70% from the field as Lefty Drizel won his first ACC title in six tries. Maryland's second ACC championship. Maryland just two of five in title games in this conference. Tim, it's very interesting. We talked before the game about the veteran leadership on this Duke team. The two guys who have stepped up very importantly in this championship game are a couple of freshmen. Carlos Boozer now with 19 points, and Jason Williams has 20 points. 5.34 to play, and Duke has matched its largest lead. Baxter. The ball is still alive. He finally... Banks it in. Maryland continues to wear them out on the offensive boards, but the Duke Blue Devils now in a situation where they're in control of this game. It's a matter of execution on the offensive end. Want to try to get good shots every time down. Make the Terrapins work hard on defense. And Maryland's got to get the ball and get down and score quickly. Last two trips, Duke has utilized that shot clock, melted it. It's down to 15. Again, they take it way out front. 
Williams shot. Long, Long rebound, rebound to Battier. Long rebound. Holden turned and went to the basket. Wasn't available, the ball went right back to Battier. Gary Williams knows time is certainly a factor now as they reset the shot clock. It's very discouraging for a defensive team to get the miss, that's what you want, but then you've also got to get the rebound. Back out front, Battier beyond the arc. This is for three. Oh, my, does that hurt Maryland? Boy, and the Blue Devils make you pay for it. 69 to 56. Now this just increases the pressure on your offensive game. Maryland Terrapins desperately need one. Taj Holden squares up and hits it for two. Can't trade those twos for those threes. Gary Williams has got the jacket off, trying to get him to put some pressure. This is a place where they miss Danny Miller. Terrence Morris not really able to put the kind of pressure on Carowell out on the perimeter that Miller, who's more accustomed to playing out on the perimeter, might be able to provide. And again, Duke will melt the clock. 15 on the shot clock. As Williams looks up, it's down to 10. Now will penetrate. They turn it over with 3.35 to play. Duke 69, Maryland 58. We're going down to the wire. The 47th annual ACC Championship. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sports Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. And now, Regal comes with something that'll make it even easier to drive. Regal by Buick, official car of the supercharged family. All right, everybody, if this one doesn't get your toe tapping, check your pulse. Here it is, coming to you in living cola. Refreshing Pepsi Cola. From the wonderful folks who put the ah in cola. I'll be signing off now, because it's my bedtime. I'll catch you on the flip side. Be there. I like this job. Right. Hey, how'd it go at the bank? Jim, the car loan. Did we get it? How about a home equity loan? At Bank of America, we get to know you. Jim? Honey? Yeah, What's this? We ask questions. Car? Right. So why not a car loan? Well, are they all out of car loans? Then we find financial solutions that fit you. Actually, we have plenty of equity in the house, and we could get this thing called a tax break. I mean, where is the trust? Bank of America. Let's talk. 335 to play in the championship game. The league's still 11. And Carlos Boozer has been a tremendous factor for the Duke Blue Devils. He's done a nice job. Lonnie Baxter only shooting four for 15. And Boozer, a big part of that. On the offensive end, Boozer has really been a significant factor for the Blue Devils on the inside with 19 points. We mentioned Jason Williams with 20, Carlos Boozer with 19. Lonnie Baxter, the Baxter-Boozer matchup, well, you have to say it's entirely in favor of Carlos Boozer. Outscored him 19 to 10. You can see only four for 15 from the field for Lonnie Baxter. The Maryland Terrapins have taken 10 more shots than the Duke Blue Devils, Tim, but they're only shooting 40% from the field. And that's one of the reasons they're behind by 11. Terrapins need to run badly now. Here's Holden beyond the arc. That'll help. He's capable of hitting that three-point shot. Maryland now, now puts on the press. And Duke is a team that handles the ball very well. They've got a lot of different ball handling options. And they're a hard team to pressure, particularly with a matchup like this. Carowell used to playing on the perimeter and handling the ball. Morris not accustomed to guarding a guy on the perimeter. Again, they'll try to melt the clock. Here's Williams. It's a situation where if they had more time, they'd probably have Nicholas in the game trying to pressure out of the perimeter. But you need Morris in there for his offensive foul. A great penetration by Williams. He doesn't finish. Falls loose. Here's the foul on James by Baxter. Williams doesn't finish, but the Maryland Terrapins all went after the block shot. And the guy who was most prepared to get the offensive rebound was Williams. Watch him. Since he's first up, he's first down. And that means he can go up first once again. Taps the ball to Nate James, who's fouled by back. So Nate James, who hit some big threes yesterday, hit four critical threes. And a frustrating afternoon for Lonnie Baxter. Well, he's got four, now got four fouls. James goes to the line. 
Well, you don't want to put the Duke Blue Devils on the line. It's hard to catch up with them from there. They're 11 to 13 from the line today. Maryland's two for two. They've only made two trips. Here comes Dunleavy in. Nicholas checks back in. Baxter goes out. Nate James, 6'6", 205 pounder from the Washington, D.C. area. There's those, there are those free throw numbers you were talking about. Huge differential. I think the reason for that differential is the Duke has been more successful getting the ball inside. The Duke defense has really limited Maryland's ability to get it on the inside in scoring position. James extends the lead to 10. 2.38 to play. There has to be a sense of urgency now for Maryland. This nice job by Duke. Really pressuring the ball out of the corner. The two doesn't really hurt you as badly at this point in the game as does the three. Juan Dixon. This is beyond the arc. Well beyond the arc. Too much iron. Oh, an outstanding play by Daddy. Gary Williams saying he was out of bounds. Well, maybe we'll get another look at it. Good play. Quick thinking by Battier, and he gets the call. Gary Williams, Battier dives on the ground very, very close to the boundary line down there. Each team now with one timeout remaining. Boy, the Maryland Terrapins came in and in the quarterfinal game against Florida State. They played so well, and they've struggled the last two games. Well, they finished the season so strong. When you think about the way they won 11 of the last 12, let's go over to Gil McGregor. Thanks a lot, Tim. Now, we just showed in the archives a game back in 1980 with Maryland Duke. That was their call. Buck Williams, Kenny Denard sitting with me. Kenny, how do you remember the call? Was it an undercut or not? I, I think Buck should have gotten the call, shouldn't he? <laughs> Didn't he land on me? He fell on you, he did. Well, no, it was uh, a long time ago, but what a great finish that was. Maryland had a great team that year, and we really came back through the tournament and were able to beat the three, two, and one seeds. It was one of our greatest moments at Duke in my era, memories. Well, and your memories here? Oh, uh, well, tonight is a great game. I think it's still coming down to the wire. Maryland's a great club. Duke's playing well. Uh, and Gil, you know, you're looking a lot better than me. Thanks a lot, Kenny. There you go, guys. Kenny Denard. We go under two minutes in this ball game. Here's Carowell. It's a 10-point Duke lead. It's nice to see some of the former players and coaches and people like that back at the ACC tournament. The passion is turning 20 years later. They're still talking about a call. Duke has done everything it's had to do today. Williams again from beyond the arc. What a terrific game for the freshman. 23 points for Jason Williams. And Maryland's really got to push it now. 74-61. Maryland just can't hit the threes. The foul's on Dunleavy. One of the reasons that Maryland is having a tough time shooting the three is Duke is defending it very well. Duke knows that Maryland's got to go for the three, and here's Maryland really chasing after the ball. And this is just a killer. The shot clock is at two as that ball goes in the basket. You can't run your ball control offense any better than that. Taj holding at the line. Every point is needed badly now for Maryland as they're running out of ticks on the clock and people are starting to leave the Charlotte Coliseum. Holden with eight points. Nice game for the freshman. He adds to that with his ninth. It's an 11 point edge for Duke. trap and really not very much Maryland can do with a an 11 point deficit and only a minute and 25 left you're in a position where you've got the foul that's only the fifth team foul on Maryland they've got another foul to give before Duke is in the bonus so if you don't get the steal you've got the foul immediately inside to go to loser there you go doesn't matter at this point who you foul and that is the 17th foul. Okay, I was wrong. I thought they had one more. 124 to play. Duke led 37-36 at the half. Danny Miller seated down at the end of the Maryland bench. Frustrating afternoon for Gary Williams. 
Carlos Boozer from Juneau, Alaska, although he's born in Washington, D.C. Not much to choose from out there for Maryland trying to foul. Boozer, a 73% free throw shooter. He's now got 20 points. Top to bottom, this is an outstanding free throw shooting team. Boozer, 4 of 4 from the line today. And he makes them both. Well, the guy with the lowest percentage out there right at the moment, Boozer comes out, and Nate James comes in is Jason Williams. And he's a 68% free throw shooter. 120 to play. And again, at this point, you got to guard the three. The two doesn't really hurt you badly. They jump out on Mars. He forces the shot. Dunleavy comes down with a rebound. This one, for all intents and purposes, is over. 76-63 with Duke going back to the line. Tim, one of the big keys to the game was Maryland's inability to get their inside game going. The Maryland success this year has been built upon starting inside, moving outside, the combination of the inside-outside game, and Lonnie Baxter just was not able to ever get it going today for the Maryland Terrapins. He had that problem yesterday, but then scored a couple of key baskets down the stretch and ended up with 15 points. Dunleavy has had an outstanding tournament. This is the second one. 107 to play. And Maryland throws it away. Nate James takes it the distance. This one will go into history books. Under a minute to play. This is the 21st title game for the Duke Blue Devils. The Devils have won 10 championships and are about to win their 11th. Of course, when you're Maryland, you just have to try to make some plays now. A mistake by Blake. He jumps up in the air before he's decided where he's going to pass the ball, and he's forced to throw it, and he throws it right to Nate James. Gary Williams not very happy with that play by Steve Blake. He calls the timeout, and he's talking to his team. This is a Maryland team that's going to be playing again next week, however, and so Gary Williams wants to make sure that the ha they don't develop bad habits here trying to catch up against the Duke Blue Devils. What a run this has been for Coach K. Been at Duke 20 years, 494 wins, eight Final Fours, back-to-back -back national titles, 10 ACC tournament titles, and he's about to get his 11th. Duke has 10 ACC tournament titles. This would be Mike Krzyzewski's fifth as the head coach. Exactly. Here's Dixon with a running one-hander off the iron. And Juan Dixon has been very quiet in the second half. He's got 17 points, six coming in the second half. Duke was 37-2 a year ago. They lose Fran and McGetty, and boy, they just have rebuilt what a job they've done. And this is a Duke team as Mike Krzyzewski now clears his bench that based upon what has happened this weekend with the teams ranked above them in the national rankings, the Duke Blue Devils will not only be ACC tournament champions, but they will also be the number one team in the country. So the subs come in for Duke, and the starters now will enjoy the feeling of being the champs. Borman. Andy Borman picks up his first foul, so he'll be in the ledger. On Dixon will go to the line shooting one and one. 27.5 seconds left. Maryland is just never able to get into that fluid transition game that they like either team. Duke really did a nice job defensively. It's been fun, partner. As always. Frustration today for Juan Dixon. He now has 18 points. His normal solid game, but he had all intentions coming out here today and lighting him up like he did in Cameron Indoor. Again, though, each of these teams will be going into the NCAA tournament. So this does not end the season for either one. It is another feather in the cap of the Duke Blue Devils. And it will improve their position. Everybody who was talking coming into this weekend about whether or not Duke deserved the number one seed and one of the four number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. But based on the performances that have gone on all around the country, including Duke's performance right here, I think they've demonstrated 
that they have certainly earned that kind of a seating in the NCAA tournament. Only one loss in two years to ACC competition. That's incredible. It certainly presents a challenge for the other programs in the ACC. Juan Dixon goes out, Steve Blake goes out. And for the Maryland Terrapins, it's been a terrific year as well. And you're right, they will move on to the NCAAs. But remember, they had heavy losses as well with Steve Francis, Abina Kesey, Lamar Prophet, Stokes. Matt Hahn with the ball. Willie Hahn, the assistant coach's son. Matt, the only senior on the Maryland team, and he's one of the captains. Baxter misses again from in tight. Tim, everybody can have a tough afternoon, and you don't want to single out Lonnie Baxter. Certainly, Lonnie Baxter is not the reason that Maryland lost this game, but Lonnie Baxter just with a performance that not up to the standards to which Maryland fans have become accustomed. Lonnie Baxter's had an outstanding year, and he will be outstanding next week once again. Duke just had his number today. And he misses them both. Ten seconds left. Should be no fouls now. Although Maryland's still playing aggressively on defense. They force the turnover. They'll get one more shot at him. That'll count. Goes. That'll count. But it won't be enough. And Duke wins it. 81 to 68 over the University of Maryland. An outstanding performance by the Duke Blue Devils. Their offensive machine, you know, averaging almost 90 points a game while they got it up above 80 today. And defensively, they did a great job against the Maryland team that can also score very, very effectively. They cut off that Maryland inside game, got tremendous contributions from the two freshmen. How's that? ACC Tournament Championship game. Jason Williams gets 23. Carlos Boozer has 21. And everybody else was solid. You had Carwell with 13, Battier with 10, James gave you his six, and Dunleavy was a little off what he's been doing in the tournament. He had five. And part of the big part of the big defensive factor for the Duke Blue Devils was Chris Carwell. Even though Juan Dixon had 19 points, he only had eight of them in the second half. Carwell, very effective job guarding Juan Dixon. He had to work very hard for the points that he had. So the Duke Blue Devils pick up their 27th win of the year against only four losses. And now it looks in fact like they will have that number one seed in the tournament. The selection show of course later today they'll announce the 64 teams. And if you're a Virginia or North Carolina fan Dan you've got to be sitting there today watching that show listening to the announcement of the 64 teams with your heart in your throat. I don't think there's any question about that but not if you're a Duke fan you're very happy right now. Once again, the final score, Duke 81, Maryland 68. We'll be back right after this. Yesterday, if an appliance died. ACC Basketball has been brought to you by Food Lion. By Buick. By Bank of America. By Pepsi by Dodge Trucks and by Bud Light. And welcome back everybody to the ACC Championship game where today the Duke Blue Devils have prevailed once more again. Coach Krzyzewski, congratulations. You guys played an outstanding game. Well, we played very well defensively. Uh, in the first half, we took, I, I didn't think we gave up many transition buckets, which, which we did a lot of in, in, uh, in Durham when they beat us. And, our half-court defense was good, except we didn't defend a three-point shot well. And then in the second half, we did that well. And Carowell was big for us. Jason Williams, made, when he got into their defense a little bit, and he hit that, he hit a big shot for us. He made two plays that gave us a, it was a four-point game, and all of a sudden became a nine, and then an 11-point game. And Jason made those plays for us. You talk about him. I spoke with you off camera saying that I was expecting him to one day play like a freshman, but he certainly did in this tournament. No, and I was on him a lot today because there is a lot of responsibility. Blake is an outstanding guard, 
for Maryland and to, uh, uh, to play him like that and then still run your offense. He was going to have to really concentrate harder and he's had to concentrate in most games and he did that for most of the time. A lot of coaches don't like to compare teams or championships. This is back to back. Not the same guys that did it last year. Compare this club to last year's club. Well, this club's not as talented as last year's team. But in its own right, it's as, uh, it has its own identity. And it's had to work harder. They've had to depend on each other more. And uh, last year was a special feeling. This is a little bit different type of feeling. How is it different? Well, I think we needed one another more. And uh, we've been in more close games. Uh, different guys have had to step up. And I, I think as a result of that, we've probably become even closer than last year's team. And last year's team was real close. Well, now, this year's team, because of some early upsets yesterday and today, maybe get a chance to go back into the seed, number one in the nation, certainly number one in one of the division conferences. Yeah, well, we, we should be a number one seed. I'm, and I'm not, we've earned that. And, uh, and we should be a number one in the East and, uh, you know, with the ACC champion in both. But uh, you know, our, to finish off strong, getting Dunleavy back for this tournament was big because it gave us energy where we could at least sub a little bit, and that made our defense a lot better. Well, you certainly had another outstanding tournament. A lot of guys played well for you, and another outstanding coaching job Thank for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Guys, the champs again, Duke University, and deservedly so. They came in, they took care of business, and they are supposed to be the champs. First one in the year 2000. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Gil McGregor. And look at Coach K, Mike Krzyzewski, has now won five ACC titles as the head coach of the Duke Blue Devils. Been there for 20 years. And Coach K getting ready to cut down his share of the net. You can hear the cheers behind me for the man who leads this Blue Devil program and their well-deserved cheers indeed. Certainly one of the great coaches this league has produced and there have been a lot of great ones. But the cheers for Mike Krzyzewski and his Duke Blue Devils. And as he said, and rightfully so, being ACC regular season champ and winning here in the tournament, he feels they should be the number one seed in the East when those NCAA pairings come out a little later today. Uh, hugging some of his players, Mike Krzyzewski, again, what a great job he did. Is Let's go back down and uh, we'd like to hear from some of those players. Gil McGregor's in the middle of all that madness on the floor. Gil? Mike, thanks a lot. You know, there are a lot of heroes for Duke University today, other days, other nights, but the guy who I think has probably led this club on the floor as much as Coach Krzyzewski leads it off is Shane Battier. Shane, how does it feel? This is not your first time, so you can compare these feelings. Uh, I think it's especially sweet this year. Not a lot of people gave us the chance to go 18-1 in the ACC. And we had a young ball club, but we worked our tails off all year. And this is just a great culmination to a great season. You talk about being a young ball club, and some of the principal players were freshmen. What was your role in helping them get prepared to play Duke basketball? I had to become a rock for them, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and, and, and show them the ways of winning basketball to, to carry on the tradition of Duke excellence. If you talk about Duke's team, what kind of personality do you guys think you have? Who are you when we say you're going to play Duke? Who must you go play? Uh, we're a, a high-paced, action, fun team to watch. We play suffocating defense and loves to get on the break. The seedings are going to be out later on today. Duke number one in the East, maybe number one in the nation? That'd be great. That'd be great. We, uh, we play and we let the, the pieces fall where they may. We're just very happy right now. Well, congratulations. Mike Shane Betty, I think one of the class acts in college basketball, outspoken young man, but he gets it done on the court where it counts, and now his Blue Devils number one again. Truly a role model for a lot of people, Shane Battier. Now in the first half, Duke one for 11 from three points. They really stepped that up in the second half, and Shane Battier was a part of that. That is our Advanced Auto Parts play of the game. A big key three coming up from Shane Battier. And watch the job that Chris Carowell does, penetrating the kick out, and there's Battier draining the three. Gave Duke a 13-point lead at that point, had Maryland on its heels, and the Terps really never recovered. Shane Battier, a big role in Duke's ACC championship. We'll be back with more celebration from the champion Duke Blue Devils in Charlotte in just a moment. Voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas.
Charlotte Coliseum, the individual plaques being handed out. Coach K giving every player a hug. This is a very, very emotional time. And I'm going to bring in Dan Bonner, who has been a player in the ACC, and Gil McGregor. Guys, you go through something like this, and this is what you work and, and you play so hard for, isn't it? Mike, this was always a dream of every player. I think that uh, the Duke Blue Devils have... You know, this is the second time for guys like Shane Battier and Chris Carrowell. For the freshmen, it's obviously the first time. But this is what you work toward. And when you play in the Atlantic Coast Conference, you'd certainly like to be in the Atlantic Coast Conference championship game. And, of course, the ultimate goal is to win that championship and go on to represent your league as the champions of the ACC. Gil, what do you think about that? Dan, I agree with you. I think for Duke University and these players so special, for some of them, it's not the first one. And I think what they share with us about what it feels like to win it more than one time and to look at the differences between the feelings for those teams and how close they've gotten. You know, to hear Shane Bettier talk about what people expected this club to be and what they've become, I think is very touching because he's watched the maturation not only of himself, but of his younger teammates. And so to repeat as the Duke Blue Devils have done, that's an outstanding thing. To be champions once is special. To be champion twice is something extra special. All right, Gil, and in our pre-show today, we showed that new ACC trophy with a blank spot there on the bottom. That blank spot has just been filled in. You can see the logo and the name, Duke, ACC champions in the year 2000. It's a beautiful, beautiful trophy, and the Blue Devils are holding it high. We'll talk with more of the ACC champions here in Charlotte, but first a pause for these messages from your local ACC station. Welcome back to Charlotte. Duke the champions and the all tournament team has just been announced. Two Maryland Terrapins were on it. Juan Dixon and uh, Lonnie Baxter. Shane Battier was there. Along with Chris Carrowell. And a freshman. Jason Williams has just been named the most valuable player of this tournament. An incredible performance today. Williams with 23 points. And as Mike Krzyzewski said, did a great job of penetrating that defense. A lot of times making the shot himself, other times kicking out the pass. But being a, doing a great job of leading that Duke offense and playing great defense today. Jason Williams, truly one of the great freshman basketball players in the country, had to come in this year and step in and lead this Duke team from the point that is not easy for anyone, much less a freshman coming out of high school to come in and take over this Duke team at the point, and he did it, and today was named the most valuable player of this ACC tournament. That's Matt Christensen holding that tournament trophy very high. We will be back and talk with some members of that all-tournament team, including our most valuable player, in just a moment. I'm serious. Broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom, Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the ACC is prohibited. Well, we just told you a moment ago that uh, Jason Williams has been named our most valuable player in the uh, you saw the smile if you saw it a moment ago and you saw that huge smile on Jason Williams face and you know what this is all about a season full of hard work and there he is and he is with our Gil McGregor. Thanks a lot Mike. I am with the MVP of the 2000 ACC tournament a freshman no doubt Jason Williams. What an outstanding performance this tournament by you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Now I've said to your coaches and I even said to you. Do you know you're a freshman? When are you going to start acting like a freshman? This certainly wasn't a freshman performance over the weekend. Well, I tell you, I'm not going to start acting like a freshman. We're going to the NCAAs. I want to hopefully win that. So, got to play like a senior. But I'm just having fun. We have great guys around like Shane Batty and Chris Carroll and Nate James. You can't play like a freshman. They expect too much out of you. And same with that man over here, Coach K. You came into a pressure pack program. Guys won it last year. You asked to step up and lead this club. You lose the first two games of the season. Does pressure start to get to you then? Do you realize that I'm supposed to lead Duke University back to prominence? No, I think if anything, when we lost the first two games, uh, I, even though we lost, it kind of gave me a confidence because I found out I could play with certain people that, you know, you've seen for so long on TV, like Khalid Amin. And, you know, not, not, they are better players than me right now, but, you know, I found out I could play with them. And just just builds your confidence. And Coach K and Coach Wojciechowski and all the staff, you know, Coach Dawkins, Coach Henson did a great job of me working on all the stuff I need to work on, I still got a lot more to do. And you got a lot more games to play because you guys are definitely going to be a number one seed somewhere probably in the East. Are you looking forward to going deeper into the NCAAs? Yes, we are, sir. Uh, 
there's, you know, we won this, and hopefully there's one more thing I want to do for our lone senior, Chris Carroll, and that's hopefully win a national title. Well, you, miss, you mentioned uh, guys that you played against that they may be better than you. After today, I don't think that's the case. You're the best young man.